What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with Flutter. So we're coming in at day 12 of hashtag 30 days of Flutter and I'm going to be teaching you how to work with dynamic lists and grids. So when I say dynamic, that means that we don't actually know how many lists or how many items in our list or how many items in our grid there are actually going to be. So we need to code it up so that we can handle any amount of items in the list or the grid. So we'll actually be building out a list and a grid, a grid in two separate tabs. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that right now. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. So as you can see, we're going to just start off with a very simple application and it's just a just a simple gray screen, nothing nothing too crazy going on right here. So we just have our basic starter app. Now the first thing that I wanna do is I want to actually set up a tab bar controller. This way we can switch between both the list view and the grid view and see the, the differences between the two. All right, so here we go. We have our scaffold, which is now wrapped in a default tab controller. We're gonna say that we only want two items in our tab controller, and we can see that they're gonna have titles right here. The app bar has a bottom widget, which is now gonna be this tab bar, and it's just gonna be a text of list and a text of grid. Next, what we need to do is we need to actually add in some content for both of those um, for both of these tabs. So in our body of our scaffold, we're going to actually add in the tab bar view. All right, so our code jumped around a little bit. You know how how BS code just be like jumping stuff around. But anyways, what we have done is in our body of our scaffold, we now have this tab bar view. It has children and we want to make sure that everything lines up. So we're specifying the length of the default tab bar controller uh, right here as two. We have two children and we also have two children or two tabs and then two children, right? So if we were to run this real quick, just so that we can see everything, um, we'll actually notice that we can switch between the two so we have the list content and then we tap that and we see the grid content and it goes back and forth just simple as that so that's all we're going to do now what i want to do is i want to build out the list view controller so that we can take a look at that i'm going to just do this in a separate function uh, that's going to return a widget but um you know obviously you could build this out in a completely different file make it a you know a stateless widget or maybe even a stateful widget who knows but let's just start building that out all right, so as you can see, we have this new function called content list view, and we're going to create the list view with a constructor called builder. Now, if we hover over this, we should be able to see some of the, the different values that it could take in for arguments. And what we're really gonna be working with are two different arguments, are like the main, the main ones that we need to focus on are the item builder right here and the item count. So we want to know exactly how big this list is, and then we also want to be able to uh, determine what kind of views or what kind of widgets we're going to be showing inside of this list view. So first, let's start off with the item count. Item count, and we can just uh, set this to a hard code at 20 for right now. And then next, what we want to do is we have we want to have the item builder. Now the builder takes in a function, in which case it has the content and uh, the context and the index right here. So as you can see, it's giving me the suggested either I can do it with the arrow function or I could do it with the um, you know, the, the braces. Let's see what happens with uh, the arrow function. I actually haven't tried it like that. But now what we want to do is just return a widget that it's going to show. So I'm going to actually be returning um, a list tile, right? We're in a list view. Makes sense to show a list tile. And a list tile can take in a title and a title, we can just make it as simple as putting in text. Now, remember that we are passing in a context and an index across this arrow function so we can access either of those. In this case, I'm just gonna show the index that we're currently at. And since index is an integer, we're just gonna go dot to string and, and do it like so. So now if we save it, and if we actually call this content list view instead of our text right here, like so, so now we have the content list view right here, and we save it. If we go back over to our simulator, we can actually see each of these numbers being listed out. So we have 20, oh, we have uh, item count of 20, right? And we're gonna display the index and it goes all the way down to 19. And we know that it goes to 19 because 
our list is zero based index, right? So it starts at zero and then goes 20. So that brings us to 19. Perfect. Now this is a little bit ugly. I'm just gonna show you how to make it look a little bit more presentable, which is another reason why the background is this nasty, funky gray. All right, so that's all we really had to do was just wrap it in a card. So now our list tile is a child of our card and you know it has a title which is text and if we go back over to our simulator bam it looks so much sexier don't you just love when things just work out really nicely i mean look at that that's that's pretty slick right so just keep in mind that when you're working with list tiles or even grid tiles um we could cover that a little bit later but um when you're working with list tiles they have this on tap function that you can call and then anytime that you anytime that you tap the list tile you can actually run some type of code so in this case I'll just print out um, hello and then I could just pass in like something like the index right like so so then when we go back over to our simulator and we tap on it and then we pull up our um, our logs all right so we got our logs pulled up you can see that it says hello one right there bam bam how do you like that? All right, so we got our list view going. So now we can work with a dynamic list view. And once again, um, we're, we're able to do this because we have this item builder. It takes in the context index, and then we're able to specify what kind of view we want to be rendered out for that index. And also, we're specifying how big this list is. So it's 20. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing, but with a grid view. All right, so as you can see, we have this new function called content grid view, and it's going to simply return this grid view dot builder. Once again, we're working with that builder constructor. It's going to give us what we need. So when I did the autocomplete, it gives us uh, two arguments that are absolutely required. And the first one is this grid delegate. The grid delegate has a couple of different things that you can do with it. Um, but the one thing that we want to make sure that we specify is how many columns are we going to have in our grid? And um, we want to, let's just say that we want to have three columns. Well, we pass that in with the grid delegate, and then that's going to let our grid view know, okay, lay out all these items across these three columns. So let's implement the grid view or the grid delegate right now. So here we go. We have um, our grid delegate implemented, and it's with this... Uh, super long, super long object. Sliver grid delegate with fix cross axis count cross axis count three. So you just you just you just plug that simply named thing. I mean, feel free to memorize that, and that is going to specify that we have three columns. Now we need to just move on to our item builder. This is just like we did before. Um, with uh, the list view. So we are going to once again get a context and then we're also gonna get a, a index, right? And then we need to implement it by returning some type of view. So we're in a grid view. So what we're going to do is we're gonna show a grid tile. Now the grid tile is gonna take a child just like most widgets do. And just to keep our, our views kind of consistent in regards to what they're displaying, we're just gonna once again simply show the index dot to string, right? So we're doing exactly the same thing. And all we have to do is make sure we add that semicolon. And if we go back over, well, we actually need to call it, right? Uh, we need to call it. So make sure you call it. So let's go ahead and implement it up here. And we're gonna save that, jump back over to our simulator. And now when we go to grid, we can actually see that we have this super ugly grid because we didn't add it to a card. So let's, uh, let's fix that. And with two simple little refactors, we have the grid tile, which is now wrapped in a card. And then we have our text, which is now wrapped in a center. We save it, we get a little bit of formatting. We go back and it looks way sexier, so much sexier, right? All right, so that's pretty good. But now notice that this is just going off the charts, right? It's just going and going and going. Now, what we forgot to add in here was the actual um, the actual item count because we don't know when this thing is supposed to stop. So just like we did with our list view, we need to add in the item count. And now we could just put in 20. And if we if we go back over to our app, we can see that it stops at 20 or 19, just as we saw before. So this is 
the basics of what you need to know about list views and grid views and them being dynamic. Now, normally you're not gonna be entering in like a hard coded number like 20. What we're gonna actually be doing is we're gonna be working with something like a list of users, right? So for example, if we had a list of users and we wanted to say, okay, we're gonna make a list and we're gonna generate it or filled uh, with length and we can say the length right here and we're gonna have it just be like a bunch of strings, right? So I'll just enter in. All right, so there we have a list of users, right? And the users are just, let's just say strings, right? So we have these users that we're gonna be getting from somewhere, most likely a networking request like we did in our, our last video. What we would do is instead of showing item count.20 or being at having it be 20, we're gonna do our users.length, right? And then the same thing right here, we're going to do users.length. We also wouldn't wanna just show the index. What we would most likely do is work with the actual object that, that we're referring to at that index. So we would have an array or a list of users, and then we would get that specific user by its index. So then we would do something like users, pass in the index as a, as a subscript like that, and then we would save it. And we actually don't need this two string because it will actually be a string. So we'll save it like this. And then now if we jump back over to our, our code or our simulator, we can see that each of the users' names is Kilo Loco. Obviously, if we had different users, it wouldn't be Kilo Loco. But the same thing happened over here. Now we still have 20 but it, let's say we got back a hundred users, right? If we got back a hundred users and we go back over to our app, we can see that it's gonna scroll all the way down to 99 because, you know, minus one, right? So we're gonna have a hundred right here. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you how to work with list view and grid views and make them dynamic because that's going to be a core concept that we're gonna be working with as we move forward and start building out bigger and better apps. So I hope that you learned something new. If you wanna keep seeing videos like this, make sure that you subscribe. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me in the comments down below or hit me up on Discord. That's that's the better place to actually reach out to me. But anyways, all the links are in the description. Feel free to check them out. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.